Hello, my ladies. Welcome to a very special episode of the Porn Addicts Wife Podcast. This is a bonus episode, and there are going to be a few of these. Over the last six months, I have had the privilege of launching a business mastermind, and I wanted to have some of those members, some of those clients who have been in the business mastermind to come on the podcast and share their story. I want to celebrate their business, their success, their wins, and also give them a chance to connect with you as an audience and share what it is that they do. So this is my client, Shelby, who is a brilliant coach, and I have been so proud of the work that she's been doing over the last six months to really take her business to the next level. She has dreams and aspirations of taking her one-on-one coaching into group coaching in the near future. That's where this is headed. And she has been able to set up her business in a way that feels very comfortable for her, where she can still be a mom to her kids and doesn't have to overwork and is making more money than she's ever made before, bringing in that consistent income that she wants, having the number of clients that she desires, and still creating space for herself and really just being able to create a business that doesn't that actually works for her and that was my whole goal with this mastermind was to create a space where we could allow coaches and entrepreneurs to get out of their own way and create what is working for them. So I'm so excited for Shelby to share her story. She's talking about her business and then she's also giving her personal story, which is so powerful and it ties in exactly to what she does as a coach. So enjoy, take a listen. And without further ado, here's my conversation with Shelby. All right, my ladies, I am so excited to have Shelby as a guest on the podcast today. Shelby and I met doing a business mastermind together with Jody Moore, and we just instantly clicked, which was so fun. And one of the things that I instantly clicked about her is because she coaches women who struggle with chronic fatigue. And I was like, oh my gosh, I did. I had chronic fatigue. And so immediately, even just, I think the first time I met you, we had a conversation and I don't even remember the first thing that you said, but you said one thing about it and it shifted a thought for me so powerfully and it made me physically feel better for weeks. And I was like, this is amazing. And Shelby is one of my, she's a part of my business mastermind and was so gracious and volunteered to come on the podcast today so we can talk about her business. So Shelby, thank you for coming and talking to my ladies and sharing your story. And I would love for you to introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for this opportunity, Jolene. It's been so fun getting to know you and also working with you. So um, I'm Shelby Hansen. I am, I've been a life coach formally for the last three years and really delving into helping women that experience chronic fatigue be able to get their energy back without um, changing and having really restrictive diets and also taking a whole bunch of supplements. Um, so my, my story dates back to, I think it was back to 2015. Um, I found out that I was diagnosed with, um, with chronic kidney disease and it had gotten to the point within a year and a half, I had perfect kidney function. And within a year and a half, it had progressed to the point where I had less than 20% function and I was eligible to be on the kidney transplant list. Oh my gosh. (laughs) It was like in the middle of my very ordinary life, I felt like Um, I had four, I had three kids at the time and my husband is in the air force. So we had moved my, my third baby was born in Japan and we had moved from Japan to across the world to Alabama and then across the country to California and then across the country again to Florida before she was one and a half years old. That's enough to give you chronic fatigue right there. Like that story itself. (laughs) <laughs> right. So I, I was really, I was really, really exhausted when I first moved to Florida and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I was like, Oh, I'm probably depressed. Like that runs in my family. I don't know what to do. And I, I kind of had this idea cause I'd gone to doctors before that they were just going to say, yep, you're a mom with three young kids. Yes. Of course you feel this way. Yes. So, and to, also when I had gone to doctors before for different complaints, they're always like, what, What I thought they were going to tell me was very different than what they did tell me. Most of the time they were like, oh, here's a pill for this one symptom. Here's a pill for this one symptom. 
I was like, that doesn't make any sense. And I don't want to be taking, like, I, they would give me ibuprofen, which was actually really bad for your kidneys. And I was yes. like, I have to take that for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I just avoided going to the doctors, which I also don't recommend doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And was getting a life insurance policy and they drew my blood. And that's actually how I found out that I was oh in gosh. kidney failure. That's crazy. <laughs> so also a big proponent for life insurance because I had um I, I already had life insurance, but I just thought, oh, I'm paying double what my husband is paying and I'm healthy. <laughs> so I tried to get it lower and found out I no longer qualify. So at the age of 31, I no longer qualified for life insurance. So that's if you crazy. don't have life insurance, go get it. <laughs> Oh my word. But that's not where you are today. That's not where I am today. So, um, I struggled along, had a lot of, um, like just so much angst, so much stress from trying to figure out like, do I need a kidney transplant? Do I not? How do I take care of these kids? I think I want another one. But once we found out that I had kidney disease, I was like, okay, we're not having another kid. Right. And then a year and a half later found out that I was very unexpectedly pregnant on the kidney transplant list. Oh man. Yeah. So went through that whole process. And then my husband, um, decided to go get a PhD. So while we were driving up from Florida to Michigan to start his PhD program, one of my sister-in-laws in introduced me to Jody Moore. And I started listening to her podcast mm -hmm. back in 2017 and I binged it because I was like, this is me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what to do with all of these emotions. I'd been to therapists. They were very less than helpful in my situation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love therapy, but it just wasn't helpful for where I was at right. and understanding, especially the model of how my thoughts were creating my feelings and yes. that I could actually process my emotions instead of holding them in was mm -hmm. revolutionary for yes. me. So I, um, I ended up having my kidney transplant. Uh, oh, and my son was born. He was perfectly healthy. He's seven right now. He just had his first piano recital last night. So oh, that's so cute. He's doing, he's doing absolutely fabulous. Um, but I, I, as soon as I was done with my kidney transplant in 2018, I literally was on the plane as soon as they lifted my weight restrictions. And I went and did a week long, um, intense mastermind with Jody Moore mm -hmm. called Be Bold Masters back in 2018. And I left and I'm like, my brain just operates <laughs> on a different level. Like everything is neutral. Like yes. there, everything in this world, like I get to decide what I want to think about this. And especially for me, it was like, what do I want to think about this diagnosis of yes. kidney disease? Because even though I had a transplant, I still it's, it's only a treatment. It's not a cure. Right. So I, I will always technically be diagnosed with kidney disease and potentially need subsequent transplants who knows what the future is holding. Um, but I needed to know that that thing that I was not the victim of it yes. and I was not going to be the victim for the rest of my life. I love this. I'm going to pause you right here because I think it's so powerful. I think there are so many instances where we can see that things are neutral for other people or in yes. other people's situations. Right. But then we are in our own story and we see things that are like, so factual and so very out of our control. Right. It's like, but my health, this diagnosis isn't in my control, but my husband's pornography problem isn't in my control. And we think that because it's something that's like, no, this is factually not in my control, then there's nothing we can do about it. And yet that's not true at all. It's so absolutely, absolutely. And I, I like when I was running my models, I literally could not put in the, in the model, I could not put kidney disease in the, in the sen in the circumstance because it was not neutral to me. Yes. So I had to get more and more facty and I was like, okay, my GFR yes. after my transplant uh -huh. is 1.78. I'm like, that is a fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now yeah. I get to believe whatever I want. A hundred percent. I love this because this is something I do too, especially with all my ladies who listen to the podcast, but especially with my clients is we get very, very specific and nitpicky about the circumstance, right? Which is so powerful, but I even avoid using like my husband has a pornography problem because even that is not a circumstance. That's a okay. thought, mm -hmm. right? Obviously there are so many women listening who they, their husband doesn't think he has a pornography problem. Right? He thinks he's totally fine. Right. And so even just narrowing it down, it's like my husband has seen 
pornography. And even that is dicey because everybody de defines pornography differently. But I always let that, I'm like, that's fine. We can just, that can be that. And that we'll just set that. But it's just like so fascinating when our brain resists allowing something to be neutral. And yet it's the most powerful position to put ourselves in because when we can see it as neutral, that's when we start to gain control. That's when we start to see possibilities. When it's not neutral, when it's just inherently negative and there's nothing we can do about it, that's when we stay in the place of victim mentality, which is very tempting. And it's something our brain really likes because then it doesn't have to do anything about it. But it also leaves us in a place where we can't do anything about it. And yes, it feels stuck. Yes. And I think too, definitely there's a place for feeling like a victim. 100%. I've been there and I get it. And I think it's very healthy and normal, but coming out of it, it, it can be challenging. And that was one of the interesting things. One of the coaches pointed out, she's like, how do you feel about this kidney transplant? Because honestly, like my experience after the surgery was not great. And yeah. my kidney did not recover fully, even now, even today. Like I have like 30% kidney function today. Um, it, but I'm not on dialysis. So there's that too. However, she asked me how I felt about it. And I told her, I was like, I'm mad. Yes. She's like, everybody can see it. But I thought that I was hiding how mad I was. Mm -hmm. And truly the healing never started until I actually got mad. Yes. And I think that anger is one of those, those, um, those emotions, they were like, oh, that's the bad one. We've got to push that yes. one away. Mm -hmm. And for me too, I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of people on the transplant list today that would switch places with me in an instant. Yes. And so I felt like I had to be grateful. Yes. There's all the self-judgment. <laughs> and my ladies do this too. They're like so angry that they're in this position at all, right? It's like, I'm just mad that this is even in my life, that my husband is watching this. But yet I know like, he's a great dad. And I know that there are so many women who've actually been like, especially if they feel cheated. That's an, that's an emotion that so many of them feel. They feel yes. cheated. Even if he didn't physically cheat or physically have an affair. And they're like, and I did this too. I was like, my husband didn't actually have an affair, but I feel cheated. And I felt like I didn't have the right to feel that way. And I was like, there are so many women out there whose husbands have physically cheated on them, who probably feel way worse than me. And they would love to trade places with me right now. And yet all of that self-judgment, all it does, I always say self-judgment just traps our emotion. And so then we can't actually get anywhere. And so we have to learn how to let go of the self-judgment and then actually allow what's underneath, whether that's anger or bitterness or cheated or whatever emotion it is that you don't like and you don't want to feel and you're resisting. We have to feel that because on the other side of that is when we can actually start to heal it. A hundred percent. And it was so, it was almost instantaneous. Once yes. I named that I was feeling mad mm -hmm. and that I was like, I am upset. Like I don't, I actually use like not as nice words. So <laughs> I will spare you those over the podcast, but they weren't terrible. But after I did that instantly, I started crying yeah. and I was like, I'm actually not mad. I'm really sad. Yes. And this I'm is what really I always teach my clients, which is anger is always to me, just a little red flag. And all it means is that there's something underneath. We're yeah. never going to be upset about something we don't care about. So if you are angry about something, then it means that there's some hurt or some pain underneath it. And so that's to me, anger is just an indication that there's an emotion under it. A hundred percent. And as soon as I let myself feel that sadness, that's when I started to process the grief. Yeah. And I could see it's totally fine for me to be sad yeah. that I thought my life was going to go this way and, it and it's headed a totally different, totally direction. different direction. A hundred percent. And in that moment, still not grateful. Yeah. I like still was not grateful yes. that I was there. Okay. okay. Now we're just here, but it, I love that it doesn't have to be one or the other. And I think that that's another powerful point is that we think that recognizing like, okay, yeah, this isn't how I wanted it to go. It doesn't mean that then we automatically have to shift into like, I'm so grateful it went this way, right? It's something I always teach in, in my, I, we call them ladder thoughts, right? The thoughts that get us from where we are to where we want to go. It's like, okay, well, I think this right now, right now I can see that my life didn't go as planned. I don't have to be mad about it anymore, but we maybe we can just move to like acceptance. Yeah. Doesn't mean I'm grateful for it. Doesn't mean I'm happy about it yet, but I also don't have to like resist it and be angry about it. 
And it doesn't, we don't have to swing. It's not either, or it's not either I hate this or I'm grateful. It's like, no, we can get to a neutral place. We can get to a middle ground and then keep moving toward where we want to go. Or maybe middle ground is all we ever want to get to. And that's totally fine too. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, came home after this amazing event and, uh, almost, I think almost immediately got sick with like a crazy parasite that put me in the hospital. Okay. And then I, I recovered from the, actually it wasn't a parasite. I caught a, I caught a virus from my kidney. Like my, mm. <laughs> my donor was positive for CMV and I'd never had it. So I caught this illness from it and ended up hospitalized. And then, um, like I, there was just like little things where I kept getting really, really sick after the transplant for about the first year. And then I had been classically trained as a speech therapist. So I went back, I, I was like, you know what? I just really, really, really want to go back to work. And so once I went back to work and started to really put like, like just to live into the purpose that I had at that time, mm -hmm. which was to be a speech therapist. Once I started that and then, and then shifted to doing coaching full time mm -hmm. in 2020, 2021, I have never been sick and hospitalized in like the almost six years. That's crazy. I know. That is crazy. Yeah. So, and I, I was like, I don't really know why I don't know what's going on, but I do know why. Yeah. Because my, for me, one of the big things is that our brains are always trying to solve a problem. Yes. And my brain for so long, have been trying to solve the problem of what's wrong with me mm. and what's the problem of like, like what's wrong with my body and how can right. I fix my body? Yeah. And my, and because of that, it was putting me in this state of lack and fear. Mm -hmm. And there was always something going wrong with my body. Yeah. So when I started to shift and be able to put my gifts that I came to the earth here to do yeah. into action, it showed up and I started to heal physically. That's amazing. And I love this because it just is so, such a great, um, illustration of how our emotions and the way we respond to our emotions create a real physical, tangible response, which is why, right. When we learn how to process them, then we can actually literally feel a physical relief in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And when you, like, I know when your clients work with you and they like heal from past trauma or thoughts or beliefs that they're holding onto, it has physical manifestations yes. and actually your health improves, which is exactly what happened with you, which is just amazing. Yeah. Cause generally I coach women that are really high achievers Yeah, that are perfectionists and people pleasers and everybody likes to be around them because they get stuff done. Mm -hmm. And what has happened with these women is they've taken these amazing traits that they have, and then they have just overdone it. Yes. And they keep pushing and pushing past their boundaries, past their body's boundaries and in a lot of the instances, especially with chronic fatigue, when you pass, push past what your body is capable of doing, when you won't say no, when you should say no, your yeah. body will say no for you 100%. And in the form of symptoms and chronic fatigue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh my God. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, okay. I, um, in, in about an October of 2021, I had a, a massive cyst that formed in the back of my um, jaw that I ended up having to get removed. And I was having, um, a lot of pain from that. And I started, um, a coaching program with, uh, with Betsy Jensen, she coaches on chronic pain. And as I learned about chronic pain, because this pain was persisting far past when it would have healed, when it should have mm -hmm. healed. Um, I started working with her and I had chronic pain in different areas of my body that my brain had literally learned this pattern of, if we're in fight or flight, we're going to send pain to this specific area. Yes. Of your body. Mm -hmm. And the, the you ladies, can look, that, hold on. Like for the yes. ladies who are like new to this, like this makes yes. sense to me. Cause I'm like, oh my gosh. Yes. I had migraines my whole life. Right. It's like, if think about when you're stressed, like where you carry your tension, right. It's like, when you are stressed, you carry, I carry it in my shoulders. I have to like physically remind myself to relax my shoulders. Right. It's like, wherever you carry your tension, when you're stressed, do you get a headache? right? Ocular migraines, like all of these things, like your body, when your muscles tense, when you're not releasing the emotion, when you're not paying attention to this and your brain has created a pattern of this, it has a physical manifestation. So that's what Shelby's talking about. Okay. This is not 
so woo and out there. It's like, no, this is legit. Like, that's why everyone's like, wow, you're so tense. It's like, are you stressed? It's like what everybody asks, right? It's like, oh, you need to relax, go get a massage. That's why it's because all your muscles are holding all of that tension in your body, but you have, your brain is just keeping that signal going of this is what happens when we're stressed. Oh, when we're stressed, this is what we do. Yeah. When you're, and this is literally in the literature now, like I think like years ago, it was like more woo woo, but there's been, um, the Boulder back pain study happened in 2021. I think they released it where they talked about chronic pain and reversing it through understanding how your brain is interpreting danger. Yes. So when your brain senses danger, it sends pain. Mm -hmm. And so learning that it's so cool because if that happens to you, it means that you can unlearn that too. You can unlearn those helpful patterns and then it has physical um, manifestations like we were talking about. Right. But if you think about it, like if we go into a fight or flight, like if we're sensing a threat or a danger, it has physical components to it. Like yes. your heart will start to race. 100%. Your blood pressure yeah. will elevate. Your muscles will tense because they're getting ready to outrun a lion yes. or whatever yes. our, you know, we've been pushed to run in away from. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and when you chronically live in that state, it has devastating impacts on your yes. body. A hundred percent. So a lot of that is learning. Okay. How do I bring myself from that state back to homeostasis, yeah. back to baseline, back to center. Yeah. So, um, as I learned how to do that, I was like, okay, I've got the model, which is amazing. Like that helps with all of our mindset stuff and helping to, to process these emotions. And I'm like, oh, and then learning about our nervous systems. I'm like, this is such a beautiful component because mm -hmm. it helps to, it helps the physical, like the yeah. model helps with the physical too, but understanding how our bodies react to stress 100%. and, and to pattern new ways of handling that. Mm -hmm you can start to feel better in your body and have more energy. Because again, when you're, when you're in this fight or flight, what we call hypervigilant state mm -hmm. for too long, we run out of, we run out of gas. Yes. Like you're driving your car yeah. and you're out of gas. Like you can't do anything. You're stopped on the side of the road that we go to that hypovigilance. Yes. And that's that collapse state. Like if you've mm -hmm. seen like, it, um, you know, a possum playing dead. It's trying yeah. to survive by saying like, you know, don't eat me because I'm dead. Mm -hmm. So we do the same thing. So when you feel like you're so stuck and you can't do anything and you want to do something, it's probably because you've been operating in this yes. hypervigilant for too long. Yes. So for my ladies, what that usually looks like is the hypervigilant is the obsession stage yes. of like always tracking your husband's phone or having a lot of anxiety, very high anxiety. You live in very high anxiety. And then that gets too hard to maintain. And so then you just go to apathy. You're just like, you know what? I don't even care anymore. He can do whatever he wants. I'm just going to ignore it. Except the problem with that is that's not true because you actually do care. You're just ignoring it. Mm -hmm. So that's why we always come back to the middle, which is acceptance. It's like, I can accept that I care. I can accept that this is affecting me, but then also take control of what I can control, but release what is not mine to take responsibility for. And that's the middle. That's the homeostasis. Mm -hmm. Exactly that. Exactly that. So, um, one of the things that I, so, okay. So that's what I do for my business. I love, I love it. it. I love helping women. And a big part of that is helping them to find like what their purpose is, because so many of us have put yeah. our desires on the back burners. Cause we've got little fires to put out, i.e. raising children. A lot of us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and we're like, what do I, who am I? Like, do I even have hobbies? Do I even like to do anything yes. fun? Am I even fun anymore? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So helping them to find the purpose and then to release these patterns that have been unhelpful in order to live that energized, vibrant life that they want to be living. So fast forward last fall, I was, um, in my business and I had been gone most of the summer and I came back and I was like, do I even have a business? I did. I'm like, do I even have clients? I did, <laughs> but I was just feeling so hopeless and so lost and just really lacking in community and lacking in, um, in accountability. Sure. And Jolene had been like, Hey, I'm starting a mastermind. We're going to talk about business. And I was like, okay, Jolene, I'm ready. Like I need this girl. And Jolene was so ab absolutely fabulous. Cause you, um, 
like you took my phone calls and I'm like, okay, I've got like crazy questions. And you were like, let's get into it. Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing. I know. And it just helped me to see how much I was getting in my own way on this, how much there was, there were so many amazing things that had happened in my life last year. I turned 40. It was my five-year kidney transplant anniversary. And uh, we had celebrated our 20-year anniversary by going to Japan for a couple of weeks, which was just fabulous. But my brain was like, ah, too much good. Yes. Like you gotta freak out somewhere. Yes. We can't allow everything to be good. Something needs to be bad. That's exactly. my business. Exactly. So I started working with Jolene. I believe it was in December. I think I had my first call with you, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. So, and just like the, the women that you've attracted into that program is just I love being in their energy. Yeah. They're pretty exceptional. I'll be honest. Like that was a fun group to manifest and to say, all right, I wanted it small. I did not want it enormous, but I wanted women who were like committed, yes. but also positive. Right. And that can be tricky. I think. And, and, and I like that you brought up the desire for support because that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do it because being an entrepreneur is a little lonely. Like you're single-handedly running, even if you have a virtual assistant, which most people that I'm talking to don't, but even if you do, they don't do all the back end. Like as an entrepreneur, you're facing so many emotional hurdles, right? It's because again, and I said this before is that your business is like your husband's pornography problem. It is just the thing that's bringing up all your stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It brings up all your lack. It brings up all your self-doubt. It brings up all your insecurities, And you are facing those solo. And so it can be so isolating, just like having a husband dealing with porn, just like dealing with a chronic illness that nobody knows what that's like. And when you find a supportive community, it's so powerful versus finding a community that just wants to validate and then not really go forward with it. Right. It's like, because there are those Facebook groups. It's like, let's talk about how hard it is to be an entrepreneur. Let's talk about how hard it is to have a husband addicted to porn. There are those groups and all they are is really just very depressing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to create something that was uplifting and inspiring and positive, but also something that you, that could be motivating and aspirational. Yes. Does that make sense? It totally does. And I just loved Um, I I love a group coaching setting because I'm like, do I know what questions to ask? Do I know what I should get coached on? And somebody would inevitably bring something up and I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I'm struggling with right now. And I love watching somebody get coached through it because I'm like, oh, yep, I've got that thing. I've got that thing. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, I can see like if she just shifted this little thing, it would be so different for her. And I'm like, oh, like for me, oh, I could do that. That would yeah. be really easy. Mm-hmm. So, that. yeah. So, so tell, I've me, been... tell me a little bit about what your business has like practically looked like between yes. when you started and where we are now. And we're not even done. We have like yeah. almost two more months left. We have like all of May and all of June left, mm-hmm. but you have made some big shifts. So I let's have. talk about it. Yeah. So last year, um, I was, I was working for a transplant, um, advocacy group, like part-time, just very part-time. Um, and I let that go in the like beginning of last summer. And so I was like, okay, we're going to go in all all in on the coaching. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Um, And like I said, I had a lot of um, traveling, a lot of trips, a lot of celebrations that happened. And so um, when I came back and was really, you know, going back into my business um, full time again in October, um, I had a handful of clients and it was great, but I just didn't see myself really growing and not really knowing where to go next. And so when I started doing the coaching, the business coaching with you, I just first of all, loved how supportive you were and how much I was like, I could just borrow Jolene's thoughts. Like Jolene thinks I can do this. A hundred percent. I'm going to go out and do this. Oh, I don't just think it. I just know it. I know. And I love Dick. So I was like, okay, (laughs) that's right. Um, and I, like I said, I needed the, the weekly support Mm -hmm. to be like, okay, bring my brain back. Like, did I do the things that I wanted to do? Did I commit to that? Okay. No, like what's going on. I need some coaching around that. So practically, um, I, I think I'm trying to think 
like we started working together and then like I had like three consults like right away I think Mm -hmm. it was like oh okay here we go we're doing consults again like okay more people and I I just I, I I'm trying to I should have looked at this before I got on the podcast but I think I had maybe one person that I did a consult with from then until now that has decided not to work with me, but all of the people that came to me for consults have said yes. So it's been so fun. That's amazing. And I've changed up my process. I made it a lot more relaxed, but also I I've been diving into the systems as well to make it a lot easier for me. So, but I did tell Jolene this past time that we talked, I said that I did my P and L um, for taxes. We did it really late this year, like right before the deadline, like Mm -hmm. a couple of weeks, you know, and you know, the first week of April. And I looked at the amount that I had created in my business for the coaching for the entire year from January, all of January, January to December, 2023. And within the coaching of uh, like the, the amount that I made within that year, I just looked at my, my books for the first four months of 2024. And I made 80% already in the first four months of what I made all last year. That is amazing. 80%. You've already made 80% of what you made all last year in coaching. And we still have three quarters of a year left. I know. I know that. And I have, yeah. The, The other thing is like, I had some clients that were, I mean, some, some potential people that were coming, um, for coaching And a lot of them had like scheduled out, they like their consults, like a few weeks out. And I, you were like, are are you, I'm really glad you don't seem worried about that. (laughs) I was like, I'm not at all. I didn't even think about like worrying about it until you were like, oh, it's a good thing you're not worried. I was like, oh, I am not. So there's something about like that, that peace of mind that I was just like, whoever needs to work with me is going to work with me. Yes. Like they're, they're coming and it doesn't matter when I talk to them or whatever, like if they are committed, they're coming. And that has happened with every single client that I've been working with over this past few months. I love this because it's not just telling yourself that, like you believe that. Yes. And it's so powerful. And one thing that I love about the success that you've had is that it's all a result of running your business, how you want to run it. A way that feels like you and comes from an easy, energetic place. Like, yes, being an entrepreneur is difficult in so many ways, but so so many times we make it harder by trying to do things how we think they're supposed to happen. Amen. Right? Like you were like, okay, maybe I remember on a coaching call and you were like, all right, well, I feel like I need to run another webinar. And I was like, I know. why do you want to run a webinar? And she's like, well, because, you know, that's like what we're supposed to do. And I was like, no, like the thing that Shelby does the best ladies is in person live events. And she does them more than anybody I've ever met. And they convert like crazy and she loves them Mm -hmm. and it works and it works because you love them. Yeah. Right. It's not like everyone listening to me like, oh, now I need to go do live events. Like if that's you, great, but maybe webinars are your thing, or maybe it's something completely different. And I love that you've really just decided to go all in with what feels good to you and what reflects you. And that's when you're able to show up in a way that's fully in service and with so much energy. And that's what attracts your clients, which is why they're so committed, whether they have a consult scheduled today or two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, I had a few people come up to me. They're like, I don't know why, but I need to talk to you. Yes. And it just reminds me of what you said. I'm like, yeah, come talk to me. I can help you. I've had so many transformations in my life. I feel like I've lived like 20 lives, like in the past 10 years, <laughs> <laughs> like this is Shelby doing this. She'll be doing yes. this. She'll be doing this, but it's because I've been committed to that transformation yeah. over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And I think there's just something really powerful about investing in yourself, especially when you don't know if you can, like, you don't know if it makes sense. I'm like, this does not make sense for me to invest this way, but I know that that's what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I followed that. I'm like, oh, well, I've definitely made my money back on the investment, like hands down, like, you know, a few times over. So, um, I'm just trying to think, 
Oh, I think I was going to say something about, um, the in-person live events. Mm -hmm. The last one that I did, I do a lot with the beauty boost. I live in Dayton, Ohio. So they have a beauty boost Dayton where they have these events where women come to them. And I was speaking at one, um, and teaching people about EFT it's, um, emotional freedom technique. So tapping, um, doing some tapping meditations and they had like a big gym and everybody was like out on their yoga mats. And no lie, like the entire front row, like just like, it was probably like, I don't know how many women it was probably like 10, 12 women were all in the front row. And I was like, I know all of these ladies personally. And I've coached almost every single person that was in that front row. So it's just, it's so fun to see the fruition of Mm -hmm. doing this work and Mm -hmm. knowing how important it is for people to have these tools in their lives because my life is so much different and so much better. And my kids' lives and my husband's life, my husband's like, anytime I'm like, I want to do coaching. He's like, yes, go do it. <laughs> like, yes. You're so much better after. Go. A hundred percent. And I love that because I think, I think you bring up such a good point of one, it's scary to invest in yep. yourself, obviously, but, and it always is very powerful to make that commitment. And it does take a commitment. I have very rarely, even when you're making good amounts of money, you still have to decide that this is something you're willing to keep investing in. It's never going to be like, oh, well, I have so much money now. It's easy because the decision isn't the money you're spending. The decision is what is behind the money you're spending, right? It's the program itself. It's what you're committing to. It's like what it represents, I guess. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's like, okay, yeah, the program itself is $5,000, but what it really is, is committing to my business for another six months, committing to conquering my limiting beliefs, beliefs for another six months, committing to myself as an entrepreneur, being willing to face all of these things, being vulnerable enough to put myself out there for another six months, right? It's just like a recommitment to going all in. And I think as coaches, especially we have such aspirations, such a strong, like, I feel like it's like a soul calling or desire to go help and serve people. And it requires so much of us to do so. And I think it's just such a beautiful, powerful calling that I just want to help whoever can to do it in the best way for them. And it can be hard to invest in that because again, it is very vulnerable, but also I think what makes it what can make it a little easier is remembering who you're doing it for. Yes, you're doing it for you, but you're also doing it for the lifestyle that you want to have, right? Like my husband is no longer working, right? He is now no longer, he no longer has a job. Okay. And so it's like, this is what I wanted. I wanted my husband to be able to be home and to be with my kids and to homeschool my kids and to be able to impact the women who don't know about the things that I know that have completely changed my life. And each one of us coaches has that, has that story of this changed my life so much. I have to go share it. And I'm willing, am I, and that, that investment is that commitment. It's like, all right, am I willing to do what it's going to take in order to get it out there in -hmm. front of the right people? Yeah. And I think that, um, when you make an investment and you learn a new skill set, it's not like you're just learning it for the the amount of time that you're in that. Right. Those are skills you take with you for the rest of your life. Hundred percent. So, like, because like the the mastermind that Jolene and I were in, yeah, it was one year and it was incredible. Um, there are so many things that I'm using from that mastermind that I'm I, we haven't been in it for a year now mm-hmm. or like half a year. And I, I'm like, oh, there's so much that I still am using from that, even though it technically ended. Yes. A hundred percent. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, it's just been great working with you. I love always being in your energy and just love like the community and the feel that you've created. That's really made it safe in order to do the things that I need to in order to create the business that I want. A hundred percent. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for your business. It's all just going up and it's all working. Always. It's just our favorite thought. It's all working for Shelby is that it is working. We can just believe that it's working. We'll see evidence that it's working Mm -hmm. and it's just going to go up from here. I'm so excited. Thanks so much, Jolene. Thank you for coming on today.
everybody go check out Shelby. Shelby, how can people look at find you? How do they find you? Okay. There's a couple ways. Um, I'm sure I'll put it on the show notes, but I've got my website, Shelby K, just the letter K Hanson.com. And then also I'm on Instagram, Shelby living vibrantly. And then I have a podcast called the get your energy pack podcast. Love it. So ladies go check her out. And thank you, Shelby, for coming on today. Yes. Thank you. If you are a coach or an entrepreneur, I have an exciting announcement for you. I am launching another round of my business mastermind in July. It will run from July to December, and it is a small intimate container where I'm going to be working with you one-on-one to help you take your business to the next level. If you are interested in this and you want more information, just go to jolenewin.com forward slash business and put your name on the email list so that I can send you all the details. It's time to take your business forward. Let's go.